Hello, my name is Kevin, and today we'll learn about the life of Frederick Douglass in five topic discussions based on his book, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. You will learn of a man that underwent many obstacles and hardships as a slave, but still managed to become a well-known man for his accomplishments. Frederick Douglass was born into slavery by his mother Harriet Bailey. He was taken away from his mother at an early age and raised on the plantation named the Great House Farm. Douglass remembered how harsh older slaves were treated on the Great House Farm. Although slaves were treated with no mercy on this plantation, Douglas had an easier time because he was still a child. House maintenance and other house duties were given to Douglas because of his young age. At seven years old, Douglas was given to Hugh Ald, Captain Anthony's son-in-law's brother. Ald took young, young Douglas to Baltimore, where he lived a considerably li liberated life in slave standards. Ald's wife, Sophia, starts by seeing cordial to being cordial to Douglas when he arrived to Baltimore. Sophia Ald even had the kindness to teach Douglas how to read, even if he was a slave. Eventually, Sophia Ald lost all kindness and stopped teaching young Douglas. The mentality of slave owning, of slave owning had captured Sophia. Douglas was not treated like <coughs> any slave by the Ald family. Luckily, Douglas does not give up on learning how to read and starts to teach himself how to read by using other boys as mentors. As he learns to read, he discovers many more hardships of slavery and begins a plot to escape for the North. After Captain Anthony's death, Douglas is taken to Thomas Ald, brother-in-law of Captain Anthony. Thomas Ald had a strict discipline with slaves, which Douglas always persisted to defy. Douglas became unbearable toward Thomas Ald's hard character and got rented out to Edward Covey. Covey persisted for a period of time to whip the emotion and life out of Douglas. He had so many inter injuries that Douglas lost the passion for freedom in reading. A day came when the, where these two individuals, Douglas and Covey, had a brutal physical fight. After that day, Covey refrained from even touching Douglas again. After that year, Douglas is rented out to William Freeland. Douglas has much more freedom with this slave owner. His motivation to escape slavery revives in his life. He starts to educate free African Americans despite the consequences he could face. With three fellow slaves, they plot a plan to escape to the north, but a slave ends up revealing their plan to the slave owner. Douglas and his fellow slaves are taken to jail for their crime. After serving a period of time in jail, Douglas ends up again with Hugh Ald, back in Baltimore. Douglas learns the skill of ship cocking. <laughs> Due to the increase of African Americans in this trade, white workers threw many racial threatening actions, especially toward Douglas. Little by little, Douglas is able to save money for his escape to, to the north. After his escape to New York, Douglas changes the name from Bailey to Douglas and marries Anna Murray. Together, they move to Massachusetts, and Douglas becomes part of the abolition movement. Hello, guys. My name is Victor. And we're going to talk about the first discussion of the narrative of Frederick Douglass. He brings personal details of slavery and brings up good points of how slaves saw their owners. And quote, the fatal poison of irresistible power was already in her hands and soon commenced it, its infernal work. The cheerful eye, under the influence of slavery, soon became raid with rage. The voice made all sweet accord, change of the one of harsh of horrid discord, and the angelic face gave place to the of a demon. Quote, he explains that his slave owner misolded or his master that power got way into her head and was using it in an improper way. Also explain how she went from good to bad. Hello, my name is Luis. Discussion number two. Mr. Douglas felt really proud when he knew that knowledge was power. Quote, learning was for the best nigger in the world. Now, said he, if you teach that nigger, speaking of myself, how to read, there would be no keeping him. It would forever unfit him to be a slave. He would at once become unmanageable and of no value to his master. As to himself, it could do him no good but a deal of harm. It would make him disconnected and unhappy. These words sank deep into my heart, stirred up sentiments within that lay slumbering and called into existence an entirely new train of thought. It was a new special 
new and special revelation explaining dark and mysterious things with which my mindful youthful understanding has struggled but struggled in vain I now understand that had what had been to me a most perplexing difficulty to wit the white man's power to enslave the black like this quote says it is explaining how white men felt that if slaves had knowledge they would later become a big threat and would prove other people that Africans could be able like other white men and would would stop being slaves white men knowing that slaves were a big need in the south for free labor discussion three family was a big need in those times too especially if you were also a slave they were a big part of them, but not all had a chance to see them if you were always working as a slave. Quote, Never having enjoyed, to any considerable extent, her soothing presence, her tender and watchful care, I received the tidings of her death with much as the same emotions I should have probably felt at the death of a stranger. This is, this is explaining that Frederick loved his mom but did not always see her, so when she died he felt almost nothing because of how little time he saw his mother. In the fourth discussion, Douglas had many memories in which marked his life forever. His autobiography tells his story, but even Douglas himself says that he is not able to describe life's sucking memories. Quote, It was the most terrible spectacle. I wish I could commit to the paper frames of which I beheld, said Douglas. These words were used by Douglas when attempting to describe his aunt naked and being whipped to with much fervor, life events were sometimes too harsh to transfer onto the paper for Douglas. Discussion number five. Just like there were different levels of social classes and levels of power, there were different levels in the slave community that were defined on the focus on, of work. When regarding his work at the Great House Farm, Douglas said, a representative could not be prouder of his election to a seat in the American Congress than a slave on one of the out farms would be of his election to do errands at the Great House Farm. Douglas is comparing the proudness a representative, a representative has to be in Congress to the proudness of a slave to be able to work in the Great House Farm. Do not get Douglas wrong. A slave was a slave in this time period. Be, but being able to work in a less harsh environment was tremendously better than working on the fields. This was a documentary on the narrative of Frederick Douglass. See you next time.